Greenhouse Gas, can you define it? Hello, my name is Terry Gannon. Welcome to the Open Climate Science Project, dedicated to the increase in understanding about climate and science. Understanding climate theories requires the understanding of the greenhouse gas concept. Prominent climate theories revolve around the impact of greenhouse gases, or GHG. So buckle up, for in this video we will explore the definition the concept, and the various theories while we identify questions. How well known is the meaning of greenhouse gas? To answer, I began with a simple interview of six unbiased adults in their mid to late 20s. Graduate students educated in the sciences. Results were revealing. In summary, they stated that greenhouse gas stores energy in the atmosphere, and CO2 plays a prominent role, but just not sure how. And they understood there are greenhouse gases, but that was unsure as to how this related to the atmosphere and any warming. Bottom line here is that the meaning of greenhouse gas is not well understood. No surprise is most of what people know about climate in general is from the media. So let's unravel the greenhouse gas concept and give it perspective. We begin with an actual greenhouse. What is a greenhouse and its purpose? It's very simple, reduction of heat loss due to a closed environment. The greenhouse is open, however, to sunlight, all of which is intended to enhance plant growth. The glass simply slows the heat from escaping, so the glass barrier is key and the reduction of heat loss is the key result. The gas in the greenhouse is, however, not what is meant by greenhouse gas. Definition of greenhouse gas. Let's look at what is online as a definition. A greenhouse gas contributes to the greenhouse effect by absorbing infrared radiation. Sunlight warms the Earth's surface, and some of the heat loss is through infrared radiation, some of which is absorbed by greenhouse gas. OK, what happens next? As you recall, the greenhouse concept is containment of the energy with a barrier. We can see the incoming solar energy heats the Earth's surface, some energy being released with infrared radiation. This picture shows infrared energy is contained or somehow restricted to the atmosphere, thereby providing a greenhouse-like effect. Is the greenhouse then for Earth claimed to be the entire atmosphere? Yes, in this theory and in one prominent theory, as it is in this graphic. The energy essentially rattles around inside the atmosphere as radiation, thereby making the atmosphere and the Earth's surface warmer. The central question is, does CO2 play a strong role? This is, however, only part of one theory and is the beginning of our journey. The dominant outward energy flow at Earth's surface is actually conduction and convection. Radiation is the second largest energy release mechanism. So let's now turn to how the atmosphere warms and what is central to greenhouse gas theory. Atmosphere warms in several ways. Primarily, N2O2 and water vapor take energy from the Earth's surface through conduction and convection. Infrared radiation is absorbed by greenhouse gases or emitted to outer space. Heat in the atmosphere results from the sun and the Earth's surface temperature energy. Collisions aid this flow of energy outward and the mixing of energy, as does radiation. As you can see, the various streams of energy make up a complex system. So what impact does greenhouse gas have? Two theories for greenhouse gas, a simplified view. Theory number one, greenhouse gases capture radiation energy with little interaction with other gases, but with a resulting somehow with an increase in the Earth's surface temperature. What about the other theory? Greenhouse gases capture the energy, but have high rate of collision with other gases and do not store much additional energy beyond being a gas in the atmosphere. There are proponents of each case. The resulting question in climate science is therefore critical. Which condition dominates? We need to learn more before we can answer this question, and this will be examined more completely in a separate video. There is, however, more we can learn 
such as what are the individual greenhouse gases and how CO2 measures up. CO2 is but a few percent of total greenhouse gas and therefore trace gas. This diagram of all greenhouse gases shows the measure amount for each. The total greenhouse gas is dominated by water vapor shown in blue. In the atmosphere, N2 and O2 dominate the atmosphere with N2 and O2 equal to 97% of all atmospheric gas. So total GHG are but a few percent. CO2 is a small percentage of the atmosphere. Water vapor is by far the dominant greenhouse gas. Also, CO2 cannot compete with water vapor in energy absorption. How much does greenhouse gas affect the Earth's surface temperature? One way to determine this is without greenhouse gases, what impact would there be on the Earth's surface temperature? Claims in Wikipedia have this temperature difference with greenhouse gas added as high as 30 plus degrees centigrade. Other theories have the temperature change with greenhouse gas to be much less than this. Well, surprise. The no greenhouse gas case makes little sense. The basic issue is that one cannot assume the absence of water vapor, given the amount of water on the planet. Removing greenhouse gas entirely is not a meaningful option or exercise for the question stated. A brief look at the Earth provides insight. The no greenhouse gas case is not practical given the impact of the oceans and the built-in nature of water vapor. With water covering 71% of the Earth's surface, it dominates in many ways. CO2 is currently 0.041% of the atmosphere, or 410 parts per million. With ocean currents playing a significant role on Earth, water in general plays a major role in the Earth's climate. Greenhouse gases are mostly molecules that are triatomic three atoms per molecule, which can absorb infrared energy. But what has happened to water vapor as a greenhouse gas in many climate publications and models? The answer remains unanswered in many or most publications. Clouds form by water vapor condensing, and that also releases energy. In satellite images, we see clouds covering about 40 to 70 percent of the Earth's surface very typically. Clouds also reflect incoming light. Formation of clouds is not completely understood or modeled very well. Bottom line is that water vapor matters, and a lot more needs to be learned. Now let's turn to conclusions and the questions from this video. The conclusion we can draw in this video is that greenhouse gas and CO2's impact is complex and is not completely understood or agreed to. Therefore, more debate and research is indeed required. The questions from this video we can identify. What is the atmosphere and how does it function? What is the energy flow and balance on Earth? How much does CO2 as a trace gas warm the atmosphere? And how does water vapor impact the climate? We have arrived at some good questions. Check for video speaking to each topic. We hope in this video that we've informed you and increased your curiosity. The key takeaway is that Earth's climate system is incredibly complex. It is worthwhile to examine the questions we have raised here, and we hope that you view on. Please check out our other videos on our website, and thanks for watching. Open Climate Science Project is where we believe that proclamations plus presumptions do not equal proof. I want to encourage the viewer to develop a deeper understanding of the climate theories and how they relate to our lives, our social structure, and our social well-being. And please visit climateintro.com website to find out more and for more videos. Please subscribe to our channel as it develops. Open Climate Science is unaffiliated with any other organization.